The WoW UI has received a massive update going into Dragonflight. It's added a lot of flexibility and some pretty cool additions. But is it enough to tear me away from Elf UI? Let's jump in and take a look. So as you can see, the UI in, in general actually looks, it's got that Elf UI sort of feel to it. Everything that you see on screen has pretty much like been given an update. It's been made to look more, more modern. Uh, looking at the unit frames at the top, you can see that Yes, it's had a bit of an update. It doesn't look amazing, but it looks a lot better than it was. There's some slight changes to the minimap, but, but nothing major. It's, it's pretty much the same as what it was. The buffs and debuffs are in exactly the same place as they were. And the character settings and bags are down in the bottom right hand corner. Probably the most notable change are the action bars. And as you can see, they're all centered in the middle of the screen at the bottom. Now, before we take a look at the UI, how to move it around and configure it to the way that you want it, I quickly want to take a look at the options and just show you what exactly has been updated. I'm not going to go over all of the settings, of course, because there's far too much to go through, but just to give you a rough idea on how it looks now. So we've got, of course, the action bars, combat, social, key buy-ins, you know, everything has uh, been updated. There's been a few additions and, you know, for the most part, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same. It just looks more appealing. But I did want to talk about a couple of things. The first one is in gameplay and controls. Now we have combined bags into a single backpack. If I tick this on to those that have used stuff like LVI and uh, bag add-ons, by pressing B, it simply opens up one big bag. So all of your bags get combined into one. Now you can dive even further into this and you've got some sort of like backpack assignment where you can basically say, okay, I want bag one to only have equipment in. I want bag two to have consumables, trade goods, junk, quest items, you, you, you get the idea. And then there is a sorting feature. So once you've done that, like obviously depending on the bag, you can uh, just clean up bags and it will put them wh where you've told them to, to go, basically. The only problem with that in this current beta build that I'm testing, I think it's 10.02. This feature's not working properly. It seems to just assign junk into, into this bag and it, it works a little weird. Now, instead of going into the settings, you can actually uh, go into the backpack itself and you've got this convert to separate bags. So you can do that both ways. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I'm glad they put it into the game. It's one less add-on I need to download. There's one more thing that I wanted to look into and that was press and hold casting. That can be found in gameplay and combat. I believe it is, yes, right at the bottom here. So press and hold casting. Basically, with this enabled, if you've got like a, a spammy class, let's say the Demon Hunter, for example, you have your, your builder and then your spender. Instead of constantly smashing your builder, you just simply hold it down and it does it for you. This would be really good on uh, a lot of the classes, but I, I, I'm not going to go through it all. You understand how it works. So as an example, I've got my Demon Hunter over to the target dummies and I've got my spender on my second action button for my mouse. So if we go over to the target dummy and just start attacking, I'm gonna build up. And then if I use my spender and the way my build works is basically I don't have to press my spender. Unfortunately, there's a debug right now. So I've, I've got my button on my mouse. If I hold it down, it doesn't actually do the action, right? It doesn't, it doesn't constantly spam my chaos strike like it should. So if I put it on number two and I hold this down, just as an example, you can see that it's still highlighted and it's going to carry on using the spender as it should. Now, it doesn't work for my mouse. It may work for yours, but at the minute it is what it is. I don't know if this is intended. I've sent feedback and, you know, hopefully they, they add the mouse support in as well. Either way, this is a pretty sweet feature. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Probably should have been in the game a long time ago. In terms of the rest of the UI, there is a little change to the buffs. So you've got like the normal buffs that you have on all the time and you've got your active buff. So you can collapse this so that you don't see it. But if I press something that will give me a, like an active buff like emulation aura, you'll see that it's displayed here. So it makes it really, really easy for those that are tracking their buffs that way. You know, you're, you're singling them out and you haven't got, you know, everything like bunched together and you're getting confused because your active buffs jump around and it's not like in order so yeah that's that's a nice addition to the game as well i quite like that and then we have the art on the action bars itself now if you're horde you'll get the nice wyverns and if you're alliance you obviously get the griffins but can you remove them well that's what we're going to jump into next so if we open up our options once again but instead of going into options we're going to click on edit mode 
And that brings us to this page. Now from here, it's probably self-explanatory, but you can basically drag everything that's highlighted. And you've got so many more options to jump into. And of course, if you move things around and you don't quite like it and you want to go back, the little box that opens when you click on it, simply click revert changes and it will just go back to the way it was. Now, by clicking on some of them, they bring up their options, as I just mentioned. Uh, some of them have more than others. I believe this will, you know, there's, there's stuff that they haven't put into the game yet. So there's still more to come. For the player frame itself, you only have the option of putting the cast bar underneath. The cast bar is currently at the bottom of the screen, I believe. It's, it's its own thing, and that's how I prefer it. So I've chose to leave it. But I mean, if you want to, you can have it underneath the character as well. And that's that's absolutely fine. The party frames and the raid frames, I'll show you just here. Now, by clicking on them, you've got a few options. So you can choose the raid size as just for a for a measure to get an idea of 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 how much of the screen it's going to take up. I guess you can adjust the width and the height as so, and you can also change the uh, the groups itself. So. It's currently set to separate groups vertical. If I go to combined groups, it looks a little something like that. So it takes away the border. You've even you've even got the column size so you can adjust how many you want. You can really like do what you want with it, basically. As for the party frames, if I click on this here, it's only got a couple of options for the time being, but they're probably going to add more later. You've, of course, got the show background, which doesn't really do too much. And the one that I prefer is the use raid style party frames. Now, just like the raid frames, of course, you can adjust the width and the height. So if you've got bad eyes like myself, you might have it a little bit bigger than everyone else. And again, you can choose to display the border and you can also display it horizontally like so. But maybe you don't like it, so I'm going to revert the changes. The cast bar, as we've mentioned, I kind of like mine a little bit bigger and you have got that flexibility as well. So you can increase the size up to 150%. For the map, you've only really got one option. If we have a look here, yeah, we've got header underneath, which is essentially the uh, the time and the location. And then for stuff like the talking head for quests and, and whatnot, you've got that there. You can move it wherever you want it. You've got the vehicle button, arenas, boss frames. You can make these bigger. You've got the uh, cast bars on, on the side, as you see there. If you uncheck that, it goes underneath. And yeah, they've added quite a lot of flexibility. I'm quite happy with it. Now, when it comes to the action bars, as you've got LVI, if I just click on this one here, you can actually hide the art. So if that's something you don't want to show, by all means, just click that button and hide it. Same goes for the uh, the hide scrolling bar, which are these little arrows here, which rotates between uh, different bars. Along with this, you can adjust the number of rows, the number of icons, the size, the, the padding. And if you don't like it and you've made mistakes, just revert it. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that the layout is currently on classic. If we go into this drop down menu, there is a, a modern preset. By clicking on this and choosing switch, it's going to simply put it in a more modernized position. How many times have I said modernized? Another thing that I haven't mentioned, and while moving stuff around, if you're one of those types that loves symmetry and you want to get everything like pixel perfect, then by checking grid, this will make your life so much easier. Now, the grid space in itself, personal preference. You, you do you, whatever helps you get everything into position. But as you can see, it goes from 20 all the way up to 80. Just look at that. Going back to the layout, they've actually added something else that you probably noticed. And that's the ability to save your layouts. But not only save them, is that you can actually share them with other players in the game. Something that I'm probably going to be doing later on in Dragonflight. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, I nearly forgot. Keybinds. They've changed. Sort of. If we go back into the options, back in the day, you'd go into keybinds. And uh, you still have to do this for a few of them. But we have quick keybind mode. You can access this here. Or you can go into edit mode. Click on the action bar itself and select quick keybind mode. By doing this, you can simply highlight over the key and press the button you want to change it to. So for example, I, I don't know, uh, two, one. There we go, we've changed them around. How cool is that? Now, unfortunately for some, like I, I, I typically use like control and mouse scroll, that, that doesn't work. So 
unfortunately you you will have to to do it the old way you go into options keybinds and, and find it there but hopefully they add that later hopefully there's some support for that nevertheless such a great change such a great addition so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Is it enough to make me jump from LVUI to the default and give it a go? Well, there are a couple of things that I'm concerned about, but they, they could obviously be added later. Of course, there are more changes to come and nothing is set in stone. But the two things that are preventing me right now are going to be the XP bar at the bottom of your action bars. You currently can't move it. Another thing that you can't move are your character settings and your bags down in the bottom corner. Now, do I see these being added before Dragonflight goes live? Yeah, of course. I actually see these coming with the pre-patch. And I fully expect it to, too. So yeah, I'm, pr I'm probably going to cut down on, on my add-ons and, and give this a go. So what do you guys think of the UI? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is there anything you would add, change, or remove? Let me know in the comments down below. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Alicean Decree, the Hunt, Essence Break, kind of in the wrong order, but it still works. Oh my god, the damage. Ugh. Oh, the damage.